everybody. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. Welcome, 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 welcome to Open. I've got a whole lot in store for you. Coming up on today's show, we'll hear from a mother and son who will speak about their family's legacy in music, education, and beyond. Then we'll hear from the executive director of the Louis Armstrong House Museum to speak about the museum's opening. I know where it is. We're going to talk about it and all that's coming up. After that, we'll speak to an artist whose work has been directly inspired by his upbringing in Cameroon. Then finally, we'll speak to an old friend, an old friend of the show. We'll sit down with us uh, and speak about everything that the, everything under the sun, everything that he's working on, his multi-platinum music production company, and so much more. So sit back, kick off your shoes, and relax your feet. We're wide open. Here we go now. We're in it. Here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. I'm your doc, Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. And you know you're watching Open. It's that live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. You can stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Now, leading things off, our first guests are singers, songwriters, and music educators who also happen to be mother and son. And they eat at the same spot sometimes. I see a lot of people go in there and eat. <laughs> and they join us to speak about their passion for music, highlight the legacy that their family is leaving behind. Please welcome to the show, Robin and Amir Small. Welcome, Thank guys. You. Thank, Pleasure you to be here. Thank you. Are you much. going there to eat after this? Because we normally like see you around this time baby. after the show. <laughs> baby. Baby. We don't want to promote them, but you know. I see Slick Rick and a lot of people going there. Oh, really? One time I was out there sleeping in my car and I opened up my eyes and Slick Rick was walking into the place. <laughs> I said, what? I said, yo, Slick. And he turned around like if I was a fan. He said, yo, what's up? Wow. He kept walking in. I was going to tell, yo. We went but to anyway. high school together. You did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you have a big music background. Tell us about it. How did you guys get into it? Um, How did your passion begin? It started from young. Mm -hmm. uh, I started uh, classically training on piano first uh -huh. at the age of five um, and then found out that I had a voice. And so continued to study. How'd you find that out? Well, you know, when you're <laughs> young. <laughs> so just, you know, the study of yeah. both instruments, going through school and yeah. thankfully having my mom who really encouraged and supported what I was, do what I was doing. And um, so, yeah, I enjoy, you know, once yeah. I uh, realized what I had, as you develop and you continue to move forward, but I'm thankful for the gift yeah. that was given from above. Did mom play also? My mom did play, so I didn't get away with anything, uh, nothing. <laughs> she played the piano? She played the piano, yeah. yeah. So she started teaching me at five, and uh -huh. then for about a year, and then after that, uh, she got me other teachers. And so I'm thankful. And then later on, you had, uh, you had your son? Yes, this is after... He came out playing? He's Berkeley like, College. Playing. Yeah, you came out playing. <laughs> uh, started teaching him when he was one years old, and I saw that he had the ability and the yeah. music talent. Oh, look at that! Yeah, All right. and then there one. You knew that. You knew at that one. Was I wasn't really too conscious, but at <laughs> five, I was a little more conscious. <laughs> and, you know, started, you know he was hitting something, right? I started tickling the black and white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, it's been a joyous ride between that and my husband, who also is musically inclined, and. All of us. He plays the piano also? Plays piano, All plays right. the French horn, plays the trumpet. Look and he that. was a music producer. Yes, He yes. has gone on to glory, but he's a music producer. So keeping uh -huh. that legacy going on and um, the music that we did together and collectively that my son and I are going to do together. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to it. And just being able to give, give back, yeah. give back in education. You ever get that strange feeling when you're on the piano and your hand goes over? Oh, did you hear that? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's dad up there saying, hey, you know, you may want to try this. Right. Yeah, playing from hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> so when did you find out that uh, you had that talent? That, that, uh, I, I really the music found bell? out maybe like eight years old. I yeah. started around five, just like my mom. Obviously, I got into it naturally from my parents. I got yeah. the talent naturally. So I was always around them, you know, uh, take, soaking in all the music that they were mm -hmm. doing. And, you know, I kind of just... At five years old, I just dibbled and dabbled, and I just went to the keyboard and 
I said, wow, this is really cool. So and then around eight, you know, I started playing like songs like just like pop songs, you know, some of my favorite songs on the radio. And then eventually I went off to school. You know, I studied with private uh, teachers in my area. And then, you know, when I was 18, I went off to Berklee College of Music in Boston. Yeah. And that's where I went to uh, study jazz oh, piano. Yeah. So I'm primarily a jazz pianist. All right. Good, good, good. So you're into the call and response and all that stuff. I'm into you know all, all about that stuff. It. Yeah. Yes. And then we have somebody coming on that. Uh, but she's going to be doing something with the Louis Armstrong uh, Museum. So oh, wow. let's all stick around. You can hear yeah. it. She's coming okay. up. Okay, awesome. Um, so did you break any of the child labor laws when he found out he was able to play at the five no. to eight years old? Did you take him out in concert somewhere? <laughs> no. Of course you're going to say <laughs> <laughs> No, just kept fostering and supporting his, uh -huh. his ability, you know, uh, teaching him and showing him things, exposing him to uh -huh. different things. You know, and so I was thankful when he wanted to go and study because it was something that he chose to do. We mm. planted the seed, but God said, OK, this is what I have for you. Uh, and so I'm thankful he followed behind us. We, yeah. we both went to Berkeley College of Music. Ah, all right. Yeah. So and then he just, you know, with everything that he saw around him and just how our dedication and discipline for the music and the passion for the music. Yeah. So I'm thankful for that. Very, very thankful. I was at a mother daughter graduation. They both graduating at the, the same, same time. time yeah and it was everybody was like so you know it was emotional but it was a beautiful thing that That's mom beautiful. said you know what well, let's do this together now you're an educator also i am you're also teaching, an educator. you have a studio well i have i have a virtual studio but my main job right now i'm working with the department of education in oh, New good, York good. city so i'm right. going they send me to a lot of schools to teach kids how to play piano uh -huh. so i'm basically based in uh we have a couple of schools in the bronx but i'm mostly based in westchester yeah so that company is doing that. Mount Vernon? Uh there's there's sites in Mount Vernon. I'm I'm main, I'm mainly in the Pelham area. They have yeah. me in the Pelham area. So you know why I mentioned it because uh, I was reading something on WBLS on the air last night okay. uh, or this morning. Um and they have about 70 different job openings and some oh, of wow. them are in the music area too. You may want to check that out. Sure. You know, just make some extra money. I want 10%. <laughs> <I'm> a, <laughs> but no, it was, take a look at it and uh it's the Mount Vernon educational system. Okay. I think it's Mount Vernon High School. Yeah. Uh, Mount Vernon you can High check School. Check that out. Yeah. Okay. They, I think they're revamping a lot of stuff over there. Oh, that's awesome. So, dad, dad played in a lot of different places. Tell us about his his career or his upbringing in music. Well, he was mainly a, a music producer, so he no. was on the you know the audio end of the spectrum. Uh, yeah. He produced for a lot of artists, like, you know, uh, Fat Joe, he did. He worked with him for a while. Yeah, yeah. He worked with uh, Sugar Hill Gang mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah, Wu-Tang. Yeah, Wu-Tang. Wu -Tang. Uh, Rodney Kendrick, jazz pianist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of different people, uh -huh. uh, which was awesome. And sometimes I would sit in on the session. Sometimes I'd be on the session. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it depends. So sometimes we would be working together. But we did always work together because we, mm -hmm. we started our own entertainment label. And so... That's how we independently put out our own music. Oh. Um, and so it was a lot of fun songwriting together with my husband and yeah. uh, doing and different things. Yeah, he played the French horn. He played yeah. the French He's horn. He's classically trained on but the French he, horn. But he was behind the scenes producing a lot of people, yeah. too. So yes. you didn't know that he was doing that until you saw him pop up on albums or something. What's this right here? Take a look. Uh, Is that his work? <laughs> it might be his work. Yeah. Oh, music of notes. On a French horn, but he, oh, he knows like all that. about that. Oh yeah, I think he sent that down. So <laughs> <laughs> I was, this is what it is. Because oh, wow. I asked about it, and it popped up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, anything coming up that we should know about that we can go to and watch both of you guys? You guys perform together? Yes, we just started doing that. We're actually working on putting out an album together. That's uh, in the works yeah. right now. It's going to be me on piano and all right. vocal. Yeah, so. called Mother and Son, and all it right. was my husband's idea yeah. oh, before he passed. You yeah. See? Yeah, so we're going to keep that going. And I have some music that's coming out this year. Uh -huh. So I'm grateful for it. Just yeah. grateful and thankful. You want to check out a free remix piece of it? Yeah. Sure. Let's go to a videotape. Shout out from the middle of a holy Indeed. manifestation to God's creation. Indeed. Groove Indeed. City, Robin Indeed. Small, Deacon, release your mind so I can design a new picture to do what you're about to sign at these times. Lord bless these lines, we're time to leave on me. Why close your house, open your mind wide to the side, call the spirituality. God's speciality, I thought I was a real God of my nationality. Said we be blood of the covenant, part of a community, tired of all the talk. God's people need to know.
Good friend of the family. He's actually a Mir's godson, but he also went to Berkeley College of Music. Godfather. Is, uh, yeah, Godfather, excuse me. <laughs> I'm the godson. <laughs> he's, he's the, the godson. godson, right. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so he's featured on that track. And that Thank was you. a single that came out um, on the compilation CD, Groove, um, Welcome to Groove City Entertainment. Yeah, so that's yours. Yes. Now, you have an album out too. I do have an album out that just uh, was my debut album. It came out two years ago in 2021. It's called Jazz Therapy. It's on all streaming platforms. and. You could check it out. Look at you. Ah, ah is that right? That's <laughs> awesome. Who Thank designed you. that album cover? Oh, it's a good friend of ours, a friend of the family. He did designed both job. of them. Uh, no, he designed mine. He designed his. Yeah, yeah. I'll give him a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually he's a Bronx native too. So is he? Stephen Alvarez. Uh, you know, if you need artwork for him, hit oh, that yeah, camera right there. Say Stephen. Stephen Alvarez. Alvarez. <laughs> and awesome. who designed yours? Uh, I think it was Steven as well. Steven did that yeah. one too? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Steven's yeah. great at that. He's awesome so at Yours that. came out in 2021. And this was at 2016. And did you put everything together during during the um, during the COVID-19? I prepared all my album work during yes, COVID. Yes, he did. Yeah. You had a lot, everybody had a lot of time, right? A lot of time. A whole yeah. lot. Yeah, a whole lot. That's good, good. Indeed. You guys have, you share social media or you have separate yes. social media? Uh, no, we have separate we social have separate, media. Yeah, we have yeah, separate. So you can follow my musical journey on best, best on Instagram at Amir Small Music. That's A M I R S M A L L Music, uh -huh. all one word. Uh, you could follow my musical journey there and my uh, my educational journey as well. You can see a lot of my students playing piano. Oh, you cool. know, from five years old. Um, I have a virtual studio, and you can see those kids. You know, some of them are different states, different countries. Yeah, you yeah. name it. Good, good, good. And yours? Yes, I have a studio called Robin's Music Studio, where you can also see me online. I have a website at www.groovecity7.com. I also am an educator with Mind Builders, and uh, so I teach oh, piano yeah. and voice over right. there okay. as well. I'm we also a former do. educator of Mind Builders. Yeah, yeah that's so. right here in the Bronx. Yes, yes. that's right here in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, been so we'll I've be been... over there this week. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Good. That's so good. We're, I teach between both and perform professionally. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, thank you. Right. Yeah, we support Mind Builders. So we've been there. Mike Nobby has been over there. As a matter of fact, I, I met him over there and we uh they gave us a tour of everything that they were doing and awesome. Then they had something in the gym. That was a while back though. But uh they have a gym right upstairs somewhere. Ooh, Never seen a gym. That that was so that might have been in the old building. Where maybe the newer yeah. building is off of Gun Hill Road. So. They keep building, man. Yeah. yeah. So everything. No, keeps I don't think following. there's any gym it's in there. <laughs> it's, maybe, it's more dance. That's a dance studio. They have. Oh, money. maybe they were borrowed. Yeah, borrow. yeah that, that's yeah. right. That's what it was. They were dancing in there. That's yeah. exactly what it was. All right. Um. So we did your social media. We're gonna post it up too. Thank you guys so Thank much. You. And when are you when, when are you gonna perform again? Because we're gonna see if we can come out and check you guys out. That's in the works. Yeah. It's in most works. of our time educating. Put it on yeah. the website. We'll yeah. go ahead and yeah. check it out. I have a performance at the end will. of August. There you go. Yeah. The Smalls are in the house. The Smalls are in the house. Amir and Robin, thank you guys so thank much. So Pleasure. Much, All right. Bye, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. I've got more. We're going to kick it to you right here on Open. We all know what it's like to feel alone. But it just takes one new connection. Want to get out of here? To empower many. This is unbelievable. It doesn't take a superhero to bring forces together. We all have the power to reach out. Let's go! And help someone feel like they belong. Pretty cool, huh? We are stronger together. 
Even though we didn't grow up together, he's my favorite brother. Hey, sis. I'm the baby of the family, and he's the gentle giant. What you know about poor Georgia? Man, please, that's a classic. You know when they say people Boy, are a rare breed? Yeah, he's that. I'm sorry, I'll be back in a few hours. Don't worry, sir, you know I'm for you. I know. Get the football. That was my favorite memory. He was always for you. This is a true story of me, Bridget Floyd, and this guy, George Perry Floyd Jr., my big brother. Welcome back. I'm the Doc Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking it out. You are watching Open. Uh, our next guest is the executive director. She's an educator, too. Executive director of the Louis Armstrong House Museum in Queens. And she joins us to speak about the museum's grand opening. Highlight the cultural impact of the Louis Armstrong uh, Cultural Center and uh, the impact that it has on the, the jazz community and so much more. So please welcome to the show Regina Bain. Regina, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So there's a lot of things happening in that area right there. You have the Louis Armstrong School. Uh, you got the his home where he, he, was, he used to live. And now you got the museum that's opening up. Talk about it. So Louis, uh, of course, hopefully folks know Louis Armstrong. Yeah. He was born in New Orleans, but he lived in New York for 30 years with his wife, Lucille, on 107th Street in Corona, Queens. He was a hit trumpet maker, voice maker, and most people know him from What a Wonderful World, but he had hit songs for five oh, decades. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello, Next. Dolly mega star uh, but he lived for 30 years in new york and some uh, uh, some people don't know that that they can come to his home take a guided tour and lucille is actually the person who um, made sure that we have this legacy and the legacy of so many other things in queens that are named after louis armstrong she helped to make that to be um after louis yeah. passed in 71. Any correlation between Benny King, B.B. Uh, King, and, uh, and and the guitar Lucille and naming his instrument Lucille? Do they know each no, other? No, no, no connection there. But I think Lucille was, uh, you know how names, they evolve yeah. over time and there are some names that become popular. Lucille was a, a popular name. A popular name, name. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. So when are we opening up? Is it, is it a grand opening date we set? Right now. Right now. Right now. Right yeah. away, right today. So, yes. So the historic home has been open for guided tours since 2003. Uh -huh. uh, but the new Armstrong Center right across the street from the home just opens on July 6th. So that is our party where we had 400 people on the block um, coming in and seeing the space. It was um, the architects were Capels Jefferson architects. Yeah. And there were a whole folks who came in to help us with this building. Queens College really helped to make this happen, along with the Louis Armstrong Education and Foundation, who have been our partners for decades, yeah. um, bringing this to light. And if you don't know Louis Armstrong, you got to Google him or do something or go to the New York Public Library or read one of my books, People to Know in Black History and Beyond. He's in Excellent. there. And um, why was this so important to open up the museum um, featuring such a giant as a uh, Louis Armstrong. Black history is important. Black history is American history. And we must keep uh, the legacies that, that, are, that are our birthright. Uh, yeah. And we are so lucky to have this site. We're lucky to have the 60,000 piece archives, the largest archive of any single jazz musician. Wow. 
that is now completely digitized and mm -hmm. searchable 24 hours a day. And this is his letters. He had hundreds of hours of recordings, pictures, and all of that is a part of That's My Home, the new exhibit curated wow. by Jason Moran. And so you're seeing that exhibit there. It has archival materials, so different selections from the 60,000 piece archives that, are, that create a story that yeah. people can check out. And they have the kiosks there where you can listen to some of the music? Most definitely. So people can pick up a, a speaker and put it to their ear and hear um, the stories, hear some of the, the work, the videos that we have in our archives. Um, and they can um, learn more about the music. Of course, they can always go to our website, lewisarmstronghouse.org, and learn more yeah. about Louis Armstrong and get tickets uh, because it's, it's a ticketed experience. Who better to talk about it than an artist like you? You're an artist and, and an educator, and you're saving, serving the community. You, do you play one of the instruments? Do you play a trumpet? So I am not a musician. Um, I actually was uh, an, an actress. So I went to the Yale School of Drama and studied theater. I have a deep dedication and respect for art yes. and what art does for people's lives, um, what music, what theater, what all forms of art do for humanity. For all of us. Yeah. And I'm an educator. My mother was a teacher. My grandmother was a teacher. So I, I was looking for something mm. that brought art and education together. And that is the Louis Armstrong House Museum. There you go. Ooh. So some of the other things that the, you didn't talk about, what are some of the other things that we can expect when we step into the museum? So, of course, for our museum, we want to preserve and share the legacy. So that's the guided tours, that's the archives. But we also want to live the Armstrong values, uh, values of artistic excellence, of education, and of community. So artistic excellence means contemporary artists who come and do research in our archives and create new works. Yeah. I see um, in that clip that uh, we had, we saw Assemblyman Jeff Aubrey there. Uh, what did he have to yes. say? He's very instrumental in our community. Yes. And hopefully hopefully you all can hear me. Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. I, just, I hear some other people speaking. You hear that? Yes, I do. Yeah. I do. Okay. I, that, I think that, that cleared it up. That cleared it uh, up. But yes. We just had to speak about just, it, right? We had to talk about yes. it. <laughs> yes. Like, if you hear something or say, okay. if you hear something or see something, say something. <laughs> <laughs> so Assemblyman Aubrey yes. is amazing and has been working to make this museum happen for decades. There was a Queens College newsletter from 1999 and it said the Lewis Armstrong Educational Foundation has purchased a lot across the street from the historic house and on it will be built what we have now. It took 24 years, 24 years of dedication from our community and community members like Assembly Member Aubrey to make it happen. And so he was there at the ceremony and we were so pleased to have him. Yeah. Uh, when is the museum open? Is it going to be open 24 hours a day? No, probably not. But uh, what's the times that it will be open? Thursday through Saturday, 11 to 4, for guided tours, when you can book the tickets online at lewisarmstronghouse.org. But on other days, we're open for group tours. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to bring your classroom, if you'd like to bring your senior center, um, other groups, you can book on other days. You just go online and fill out the form, and we'll uh, figure that out for you. What are people driven to uh, when they step into the museum? Because what's the main attraction that people want to see or hear most? They're, they're driven to the atmosphere. They just want to be in the midst of, of, what it, of greatness, of what this man represented. Mm. Um, they're, concretely, they're driven to the trumpet. The King George V um, gave, of England gave a trumpet to Louis Armstrong, and that is on display. They're driven to the Grammy from Hello, Dolly. And then if they take the guided tour into the historic house, no one has lived in that house since the Armstrongs. All the furnishings, the wallpaper, the, the art is theirs. Yeah. And so it feels like you just stepped through time back for when they were living there. And you can, as a part of our experience, we have archival 
uh, audio. So you can yeah. hear Louis and Lucille talking uh, as if they were in the room. Yeah. Because he recorded himself and he recorded him and Lucille talking sometimes fighting. He recorded all of that. <laughs> and it's part of our archives. And it's a That's part of real. the historic house experience. Yeah. And he was also an actor, too. Uh, speak about that. He was in a number he of films. Was, uh, over 35 motion pictures. He was the first African-American to have featured billing in a Hollywood film. He was one of the first artists to have in his contract that he would not play in a place where he could not stay. So exactly. this was when there was segregation and black artists could not drink water, use the bathroom, definitely not stay in a hotel um, in many places. And he got big enough where he could say, actually, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. Uh, I will not play here unless I can stay here. Yeah. And he set, helped set a precedent for other artists. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people went through that, you know, and they had to work the Chitlin circuits, that's what they called it back then, and stay like undercover and you couldn't eat at certain places, couldn't drink the water, and it was just mm -hmm. terrible. But I'm glad he stood up and said, you know what? <laughs> If I can't stay here, I can't play here. That's a beautiful he thing. He was one of the first. That. Yeah. I mean, he was born in 1901. This is in the reverberations of slavery. This is before the civil rights movement. He's breaking ba barriers and being one of the first to open the doors. And so we're so thankful for he him. He'd be about 122 years old right about now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something like and that. You know, he, he had 1901. Do the math. 1901. <laughs> He had two birthdays. Uh, while he was alive, um, he believed that his birthday was July 4th. But uh, after his death, a birth certificate was found that said August 4th. And so we celebrate both of his birthdays at the Louis Armstrong House yeah. Museum. Why not celebrate as Why many not? birthdays as we can? Why not? <laughs> we do that with concerts. So we have lots of concerts throughout the year in yeah. our garden. And now in the new Armstrong Center, there's a 75 seat performance venue. And so if folks sign up on our newsletter, when they go to our website, they'll learn about the performances. We just had Catherine Russell, jazz legend vocalist. Uh, Jason Moran is going to be performing in the new jazz room on September 23rd. On July 29th, we have some per, uh, trumpet players who are going to be performing. And if you have a young person in your life between ages 8 and 12, and they want to learn to play the trumpet. What? Sign up on our news uh, newsletter um, on our website, and you can get classes for free. Look at that's beautiful, and I like that they have a new jazz room where artists can come in and perform. Are those uh, hours listed? Are they scheduled where people so, can see? So the season is not out yet uh, because we just opened. We want to we're gathering our season together. Yeah. So and when folks sign up to the newsletter, they'll they'll see that there. Uh, but we're so excited for what this this jazz room will bring. We are definitely about history. We are a museum that is preserving through archival, through the historic house, but we're also about the future. We want artists right now to know the legacy that they're in and be able to perform new works. Sure. So we have something called Armstrong Now, where we work um, and give residencies. So if you are an artist out there, uh, an artist from the Black diaspora who wants to uh, apply, check us out. And we would love to work with you. What's that website again? LewisArmstrongHouse.org. That's LewisArmstrongHouse.org. Thank you so much. Regina Bain, Executive Director, Louis Armstrong House Museum. We love you. Thank you for that great information. And you're always welcome to come back again. Thank you. We'd love to. Yeah. We're going to catch you in there. Maybe uh, we'll do something from the jazz room and we'll do it live. I love that. That's yeah. great. All right. Talk to you soon. Thank you. And I'll see you soon. We will. Thank you. Okay. See great. you soon. Stay tuned. We'll take a break. I've got more, a whole lot more coming up next on Open. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking. Now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead. Catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Where did the time go? 
Hard part. You quit smoking. Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. Welcome, 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 welcome back, everybody. Our next guest is an artist all the way from Cameroon. Yeah, and he joins us to speak about the inspiration behind his art and so much more. So please welcome to the show, Marvin Gwet. Now, his brother Yannick is on the line with us also. He's going to be the interpreter because um, Marvin, he speaks French. He speaks French in, in Cameroon. All right, um, so tell us a little bit about this wonderful art. I know you grew up in a... In a and a, a forest oasis uh, located in Central Africa called Cameroon. Talk about that. Talk about that experience. Yannick, you can you can start it out. Mm -hmm. oh, you, oh, okay. You, yeah. Tell uh, tell Marvin about what what we just mentioned about uh, okay. telling uh, us about his experience. Okay, Marvin, uh, the first question, they just want to know about your experience, you know, where you're from, you see, you talk about the, where you're coming from, that nice oasis, which is your inspiration, so if you can give more detail. He can say it in French. Mm -hmm. Je peux parler en français. Mm -hmm. Allô? Oui. Allô? The first, yeah, the first Allô? question, Marvin, tu peux Allô? répondre en français, ton inspiration, d'où tu viens? Oui, oui, oui. Oui, oui, ok, d'accord. Allez, bonjour, euh, je vous remercie déjà pour cette interview. Euh, je m'appelle Marvin Witt, je suis artiste peintre et je suis originaire du Cameroun. Euh, je dirais tout simplement que je suis né d'une famille euh, d'artistes déjà, qui euh, détient beaucoup de talents dans divers domaines. Et personnellement, pour non, moi, oui. Don't know, this one doing a transmission. Uh, he just said, uh, Marvin, I am an African artist from Cameroon. I come from a great, uh, great family where we have a lot of artists and uh, everybody touch many talent in the family. Mm -hmm. Basi Marvin, continue. And then he... Okay, d'accord. Donc... Donc, donc, donc euh, mon inspiration dans mon travail me vient de, de plusieurs horizons. Hein. Je m'inspire de beaucoup de choses. En... And what did he just say? De la vie. Go, go ahead, go ahead, mm -hmm. Yannick. Vas-y, Marvin, the inspiration. Where is coming your inspiration, oui. Marvin? Oui, oui, je disais que je, je, mon inspiration vient de la vie quotidienne de la vie quotidienne, des mystères même, de la vie et, et surtout de tout ce qui m'entoure. Donc, euh, okay. c'est un peu ça. Mm -hmm. Ok, he said, and, um, you know, for where he come from the family, he got just, he's just inspired by what he see uh, every day. Yeah. Uh, his past, present life, but he's really like in, inspired by all the little um, mysterious things which happen around him and which kind of make the life which is uh, we're living right now. He's kind of looking a little bit around his past experience and all his surrounding. 
Yeah. And you know what? Um, it's not only what he sees around him because he, he delves into the subconscious world. Tell him to talk a little bit about that, how he, he goes into the subconscious world and just brings it to light. Ok, Marvin, on te pose la question que qu'est-ce que, puisqu'on dit que tu ne, tu ne t'inspires pas seulement de ce qui est aux alentours de toi, mais you have a certain oui. inspiration which is come deep, quelque chose qui vient profond. Oh, oui, oui, oui. Est-ce que tu peux un peu parler, est-ce que tu peux un peu parler de ça? What can you say? D'accord. D'accord, bon, ben, je, dirais, je dirais que oui, ça ne se limite pas seulement à ce que je peux voir ou, ou ressentir, quoi. Parce que mon inspiration vient surtout parfois des, des mouvements, des mouvements de, comment dire ça, des, des mouvements de mon intérieur, quoi. Ça peut venir d'un rêve, ça peut venir de, des questionnements que je me pose par rapport à des choses connues ou non connues. Et il y a des images qui me viennent comme ça et je, qui me permettent à ce que je, je puisse les réaliser sur toi. Voilà. OK. So he said, and uh, when he go a little bit deep, is of course, it's not only what he sees, he feels a lot of things. He dreams about a lot of, yeah. um, um, of things as well to the... Like he just say, sometime, you know, in the middle, uh, it could be at the middle of the night, it could be uh, or during the day he has a thought. So he say he really trying to put every of his feelings, some of his emotion, and then what his kind of dream he or he draws in his in, in his head. But he says really come a lot of things talking to him, and then that's a part of his inspiration as well to when. He kind of explore his uh, subconscious. Yeah. Uh, we're talking right. to Marvin Guet, and he's a fantastic artist. He's from uh, located in Central Africa in Cameroon. Um, and his brother Yannick is interpreting. Of course, he speak uh, French over there. So we got some interpretation uh, going on. But we want to let you know that uh, he's a fantastic artist, and he just comes up with these fantastic ideas and images from from what he sees around him because um, he lives in a forest oasis in Cameroon. And, um, and also he goes deep within and brings it out of his subconscious world. And he puts that art together. And these two things meet together. And it's a, it's a, a wonderful o oasis for everybody to see. Is that right, Yannick? It is perfectly right. That's exactly what it is. Ask him who uh, are some of his major influences or um, some of the people that he looks up to is it Leonardo da Vinci or, mm -hmm. or I, know, I know Leonardo da Vinci is a part of Marvin uh, we're asking uh, quelles sont tes influences uh, quelles sont les, pers les personnes qui t'inspirent oh, ouais. plus oui comme euh, comment on dire ça tout bon comme tout bon étudiant les influences euh, sont diverses quoi déjà j'ai très j'ai été très influencé par euh, par la qualité du trait de, de Léonard de Vinci. Bien sûr, j'étais plus jeune, mais je vais dire, j'ai mon propre style, quoi, en découvrant le travail de plusieurs designers et, et grands dessinateurs de renom. Okay. Euh, comment, so he... yeah, comment il s'appelle Comment il s'appelle Les designers yeah. The, the other thing is that um, I, I see that he was nominated. He was nominated um, as the laureate in the National Painting and Sculpture Competition under the patronage of uh, the Ministry of Culture. Um, tell me yes. to talk about that briefly, but keep, keep his okay. answers short so that you can uh, interpret them. Of course. Uh, Marvin, uh, je vais te, quand je te pose des questions, donne-moi un petit peu le temps pour traduire pour eux. And, and then just to, uh, just to, um, to uh, go to the next question, he just said, of course, like, like any young student, he was inspired by Leonardo da Vinci. And of course, uh, with the time passing, mm -hmm. he um, kind of touched a little bit on different many artists. But of course, Leonardo da Vinci was one of the biggest influence. And then after that, he kind of crafted and then uh, make his um his uh 
he's kind of walk on his own on his style. But yes, Leonardo da Vinci is one of the biggest in arches and friends. And then um, Marvin, um, before you go to the next one, they say that you were nominated to um, for an art competition as well too. So they want to know, ils veulent savoir un peu on ton feedback on, de cette nomination en fait. Euh, C'est après être rentré à, à l'Institut des aujourd'hui des beaux arts de d'une école italienne IFA Institut de formation mmh. artistique que voilà trois ans après euh, la même année c'est-à-dire en 99 a été lancé le concours national de peinture et de sculpture dont j'ai été l'un des, lau des lauréats, quoi. En fait, j'ai occupé mmh. la deuxième place sur l'échiquier national, quoi. Mais okay. c'est le fruit, Is... le fruit oui, d'un très long travail. OK. So he said that, oui, oui, uh, donc j'ai dit qu'il faut terminer, c'était le fruit d'un long travail. OK. okay. That participation came because he was, at this point, he joined um, the, the kind of academy of... Uh, of Of, uh, of art in Cameroon, and, and uh, so he he was nominated, and he ended up being the number the second uh, the second uh, nominated for that uh, for the for the award from that school. Yeah. But he was like uh, all his training, participation, getting ready for some exhibitions, uh, which first uh, make him join uh, that institute because that academy because that was something in the whole country. The Cameroonian country kind of created, so they really wanted to regroup all those kind of best artists in the country and uh, to join it. But uh, yes, that participation where he became number the second was right after that uh, opening yeah. the whole uh, nationwide uh, made. Yeah, and and, and finally, um, of course, they're going to wrap us up. But I like the colors and the ideas mm -hmm. that he puts together in uh, telling the story on the painting. It's like uh, It's like wonderful. I mean, unbelievable how he puts all of that stuff together. Where can we find his artwork? Is there anywhere where we can go to purchase or take a look at a lot of the art that he has? Okay. Well, that one, I will respond to that question. Okay. We do have a video where mm -hmm. all his art is right now. It is in, um, it is in his shop. So we are working right now because uh, he, he, he had, uh, through his uh, talent manager, uh, Susan um, uh, Briggs and Susan Bass, she um, putting all together right now. We have his website coming in. He has his uh, Instagram mm -hmm. who has just been finalized, but we still need to put some, the description of many painting. And then soon... Um, most of his uh, painting will be shipped uh, to US and they will be available soon. So that one is uh, is probably before the end of this month. Everything I like it. I will like be launched it. online. Yannick, thank Marvin. you for your interpretation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And uh, Marvin, thank you for all the wonderful work that you're putting out. And hopefully we can uh, come and visit you in this wonderful oasis in Central Africa called Cameroon. <laughs> and uh, all we'll see he you right here be. in the States. Thank you. But thank you. He thank he you. will thank be here much. like soon. He will be here soon himself, and then it will be uh, very important uh, to see everybody uh, and talk about his art. So, like I say, Cameroon gonna come to us <laughs> for presenting thank his you. art. <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. We've got to take a quick break right here, but I'll come back and uh, we'll hook you up with some more. We've got more right here on open. Thank you. Thank you. so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame, en esta casa los hombres no lloran. You alright? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Yeah, 
how you doing, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, last guest is a motivational speaker. The brother's out there all over the place, all around the world. He's an educator, too, and a, pl a multi-platinum bad boy, hitman record producer and CEO of Platinum Boy Music Incorporated. Please welcome to the show. Here he is. Amadeus is in the house. My brother, the legend. Not, 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 just the legend. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> good to see you, Doc. How you feeling today? Good, good, good. good. You've been through a lot of stuff. I mean, we've all been going through a whole lot. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, but we still got to keep on going because the people that we left behind want us to keep it moving. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And they're, they're, they're working from another platform, Absolutely. so to speak. I love how you said that. You know what we're talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, how sir. do you continue to do the things that you're doing knowing that you have someone in your family pass away? Yes. Uh, so so today, of us have, having to go through stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, July 17th uh, is my mom's birthday. Yeah. Uh, so happy birthday, mama. Mom. We love you. 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 Dr. Bobby, she knows you very well. She's like, you're going to see Dr. Bobby. Yeah. Like, she knows you very well. Uh, We're going to sing to her. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mom. Happy, happy birthday to you. you. And many more. We might be a singing group. <laughs> we might be singing. We're, something we're harmonizing just, a little bit. Something just happened just there. It just happened here. You know? <laughs> so happy birthday, mama. Uh, but it's bittersweet. We just um, want to be the first to sing happy birthday yes, to you. Yes, yes, Um, But on the same day, a year ago, uh, July 17th, you know, our dad uh, passed away, um, Sorry, yeah. you know, so it's, you know, it's kind of like, man, okay, we, we're going to celebrate mama, yeah. you know, but at the same time, we have to be strong enough to celebrate dad as well. Yeah. It's a celebration. Yeah. You know, we miss him. Uh, dad will be here. there. Absolutely. Dad will be there. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you for that moment, you know, and thank you for the support and the love. Always. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Bob. So how do you continue to doing the things that you're doing? Because uh, the last time we spoke, you were, oh, you were always into mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. What are you doing now? Um, back to performing again. You know, we spoke uh, during the pandemic uh, via Zoom, so it's great. I'm grateful yeah. to be back in the studio oh, with you. Uh, so back to you performing. Can, you can smell people. You can smell yeah. the cologne yeah. and smell, perfume. You see, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I got the Versace the every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so back on the road, uh, still uh, at Dre's nightclub in Las Vegas on the weekends. Um, shout yeah. out to Dre's. Uh, Trey Song still performing. Yeah, with yeah. Trey, we have a show on the 29th in St. Louis. Um, the, the story of Amadeus and the beat goes on book is. Is still out doing very well, so still visiting the schools, high schools, speaking to the kids, encouraging them to chase their dreams and, and live their dreams like how I'm doing. Teaching at a summer camp right now. Yeah, uh, shout yeah. out to Dwight uh, for having me. You know the babies too, the babies. Yeah, you know, only yeah, have the older yeah. students, the high the school, innocent babies, the babies, the four to five and the six to seven who's just introducing them to music and instruments and instrumentation. And got to give them something to do. Oh, they love it. You got to give them it. something to do. Absolutely. So yeah. just keeping busy. Um. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, before it was just Amadeus, and now, you know, I've, I've earned my honorary doctorate in music and hey, education. Hey, so, the doc. You know, we docs, man. We yeah. docs, man. We I'm, docs. We docs. We docking it. I'm still trying to, I'm still trying <laughs> to take that in. You know, you, you're used to it. <laughs> and, you know, people say, hey, hey, Dr. Amadeus. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so it sounds good. It got thing. a nice flow to nice it. Nice ring, ring to it, yeah. right? Yeah. Dr. Right. Amadeus. Not to sit next to Dr. Lee. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we weren't always there. But now, right. started from the bottom, now, now we're, we're here. Good. Started from the bottom, now the whole team's here. <laughs> See, he's better with lyrics than me. See, I'm, I, I was about to do the beat on the table, but Dr. Bob, got the, he got the lyrics, man. <laughs> I well, suck at you, lyrics. You got the flow. Yes, Tell sir. us about the, your success stories, man, where you started and how you're doing it now. Big Bronx Energy. Big Bronx Energy, mm -hmm. 169 Washington Avenue, to be exact, the nine. Um, fell in love with music, you know, fourth grade, picked up the drumsticks for the first time. Found my love and passion. You know, I yeah. always loved music, always was surrounded by music. We had to clean up on Saturdays. So, you know, the jams is rocking. Uh, and I didn't know that, you know, I would fall in love with hip hop and want to become a music producer. But it happened. Really yeah. young age, 13, 14, 15 years well, old. You're part of hip hop's 50. Yeah. 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 You, you in know? there? I'm in there. <laughs> I'm in there. You know, a lot of legends in there. A lot of legends. A lot there. of legends so, in there. You know, to even be mentioned yeah. amongst those, you know, it's a blessing. Yeah, that's Look at like, that. That's in Vegas, man. Yeah. yeah, we did uh shout out to Rick Ross. We did um a Rick Ross with Ross in Atlanta, uh, alongside an all black orchestra. He's the one with the two million dollar watch. Man. <laughs> Rick Won't Ross. Be like him, man. He's got his own jet and and and, and flies to Vegas on his yeah, own yeah. jet. And you know, his his house is the size of probably two White Houses. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Uh, but it's great to see, man. Especially as but a he's black down man. to earth. How oh, how one is of the he? Most humble dudes. How, how is he? I mean, you know, just to be around. Amazing. And how does that make you feel? Amazing. Yeah. You know, um, to see someone of that level. I'm a fan of his music first. 
Yeah. We performed that Dre's uh, in Vegas. Uh, and he, you know, after the set, you know, he was like, hey, man, I got something special coming up. You know, I, I, I need you for, you know, people yeah. say that. Artists yeah, yeah, say that all the time. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of like, all right, cool. You know, I didn't really get too excited about it. About two weeks later, I get a phone call from the conductor, Jason, on, and he's like, hey, I got your number from Rick Ross. And we're doing this show in Atlanta, one time only, all black orchestra. And he said, his exact words is, got to have Amadeus on drums. And yeah, I said, yeah. he said that. And he said, yes. So he said, so That's can we have Amadeus on drums? Yeah, yeah. And I said, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it was an amazing performance, you know. And and what's so dope about that, Dr. Lee, is that I'm not classically trained, so I don't I don't know how to read music. So but you can all, flow. Yeah, it's all a feeling. Yeah. So to be alongside an orchestra and a symphony who's all reading music, and I'm there just off of the vibe and just because I know his music and I'm a fan. Uh, it was just, it was in all, I was in all of them and they was in all of me. Like, so how's he doing, doing that? Wait a minute. He ain't reading, he's just going. Because once, he's you know, flowing. once the song stops, they're like, and there's no shot to them, and there's no disrespect, but they stop. If Rick Ross wants to keep going, I'm yeah. like, let's keep this thing let's going. Let's keep it going. You know what I'm saying? So keep it going. Such a to blessing. the break of dawn. Absolutely. Ah, tell us about that. <laughs> The beat goes on and on and on yes, until sir. the break of dawn. Yes, the story of Amadeus and the beat goes on. Got that done during the pandemic. Uh -huh. Always wanted to have a book uh, to be able to inspire kids. Um, you know, but we move around so much. You know, you can relate to that. We move around so much. I just never had the time. Yeah. So when we were forced to take a seat due to the pandemic, it was the perfect time to get that done. And shout out to the co-authors, Lynn Hobson, Trina Stackhouse. Couldn't have done it without those two queens. Yeah. Um, and I'm very proud of it. Very proud of it. It's doing very well all over you know, New York, all over yeah. the schools. Um, the kids are receiving it well. And I wanted to leave them something tangible, you know, because sometimes, and you know, when you go speak to students, sometimes it goes in one ear and out the other. When they leave that building, they might not remember everything you say. Yeah. Uh, but so for me to leave them that book, they can always refer back to something, you know, yeah. that they connect and with. And that helps with the follow-up because it always has to be a follow-up. Because you're right. Sometimes they leave the building and that's it. But mm -hmm. you do give them something to think about. Mm -hmm. You leave an indelible mark on yes, their sir. minds. Yes, sir. So that when you do come back, oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a dancer yeah, in the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a blessing. Yeah, it's a good thing. And people will come up to you years from now mm -hmm. saying, yeah, I remember you came to my school. That's what it's all about. I feel right it now. all the time. That's what it's all about. You know, people say, what do you want people to remember you from? The music? You know, the music is cooler, but I felt like it was kind of the stepping stone mm -hmm. to be where I'm at today to just reach people, to just inspire people. Yeah. A new song and idea comes out every second, every day, and it can forget yeah. you. What advice would you give to up and coming artists? A lot mm -hmm. of people, well, if we were looking up to people to guide us in the right direction yes, when sir. we were coming up. What advice would you give to someone right about now? Be yourself. And I think that's something that a lot of artists are not doing these days, right? They're, mm -hmm. They want to win. They want to be successful. They want to be rich. They want to be famous, yeah. right? So they're it's a lot of copying going on. There's a lot of artists that's wanting to be like other artists because they're winning or because they see the level of success that they have, right? Yeah. But for me, is I'm like, just be authentic. Be authentic to who you are. The people will appreciate you when you're real and honest and transparent mm -hmm. and telling them the truth. Yeah. You know, so be you. Tell your truth. Tell your story through your lens right, right. so that people can appreciate that, yeah. you know? And I think that's, that's very important advice. Um, we're all unique in our own way. Yeah. You know, and I told my daughter this last night. I said, look at your hands. And she's looking at the hand. What do you, what, what do you mean? I said, look close. I said, you see these lines on your fingers? And she's like, yeah. I said, those are your fingerprints. You're the only person in the world who has those fingerprints. That has that fingerprint. That somebody can have your name. Somebody can have the same length hair, dressed like you, same sneakers. But no one is you. And There's that's your like superpower. You. Yeah. No one is you. So once you tap into that and appreciate who you are, who you are and what you are and, and how God specifically molded and shaped you and brought you into this world, like... Mm -hmm. That's your superpower. So yeah. if you can tap into that, you're unstoppable. Yeah, it's not fried. It's shake and bake. Yeah. Not hell. <laughs> <laughs> but, but wait a minute. You're absolutely right. In our line of business, you know, of course, we're entertaining people all mm -hmm. over the place. But mm -hmm. um, it's okay to copy somebody. Mm. But that's what comes out. Your mm. own unique. Yes, sir. Uh, ability to do what you do. Absolutely. Because there's nobody like you. And, it's, and again, it's, you like have your you own said, personality. It's cool to be influenced by. Yeah. Because I'm influenced by you. Yeah. Right? But we already have a Dr. Bob Lee. Yeah. So I can't be Dr. Bob Lee. You know, right. I can grab what motivates me and what inspires me about you and, and, and make it my own. Right. Right? So when I walk into the building, they'll go, that's Dr. Amadeus. 
Yeah. You know and that's what people are looking for, yeah. you know, because uh, speaking in this area where you have to fit the sound of the station, mm -hmm. you can't come in there and sound like a rock and roll DJ trying to get a job on WBLS. Yes, sir. So you got to sound like somebody and do, do it the way they're mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to copy, copy right. them, but your own personality. Yes, sir. And individuality yes, is going to come out. Absolutely. And that's what they're going to see. Absolutely. So, oh, wow. They sound just like us. So, you, we, here, sign this. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's next for you? Man, I think what's most important, right, and I learned this during the pandemic, is just to make sure, especially as men, black men, black kings, mm -hmm. is that, you know, we're right, we're in the right space, that we're at peace, right, that our, that our mental mm -hmm. is good. We move so much, we want, we do so much, we have all of these goals and all these different things. Yeah. But if, you, if you're not aligned, if you're not healthy, if you're not in the right space mentally, you know, you can't achieve all of those different things, mm -hmm. right? So I think from my focus is make sure you're happy, make sure you're at peace, right? Because that's when you can be your best. That's when you can give the world your best because you're at Beautiful. your best, right? So I think that's, to me, the focus and then everything just kind of falls into place. More music, more songs, yeah. more performances, more being a blessing to the kids in schools, that always, but just make sure that you're good first. You know, it's so a that's beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Website, yeah. social media, Absolutely. where can we go? Yeah, so go get the copy of the book, The Story of Amadeus Days and the Beat Goes On, available now. I'm still signing all copies, so. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, www.iamkingamadeus.com is the website. Um, my social media, I'm on Instagram, Amadeus PBM, Amadeus PBM. And again, the website is www.iamkingamadeus.com uh, for all info information in regards to me, what I'm doing, what, what's up and coming. You know, log in, log in. Hey, man, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for you having me. You're always, always welcome talking. to come back. Appreciate like you. Like I said before, this is your house. Yes, sir. All Big right. home. Home. Bronx energy. There you go. BX. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Big BX. Energy. I'm a dance, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Producer, songwriter. He does everything. <laughs> He's got it going on. Yes, he can sir. be a jack of all trades and a master of everything. Well, um, I, I interviewed somebody and said, yeah, they call me a jack of all trades and a master of none, but it's all business to me. Wow. <laughs> hey. Hey, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show. I want to thank our guests for joining us. Are you, our viewers, for tuning in and checking it all out? Thank you for letting me share in this space and time with you. You can keep following BronxNet TV for continued coverage. And uh, you can check out the, our hosts, Kevin Arlene, Darren Jaime, and Rena Valentin for all new episodes of Open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. For all of us here at BronxNet, have a great and enjoyable day. Thank you guys on the floor for doing all. Thank you guys in the, uh, the studio up there. Look, look, they're waving a hand through the window, the glass window. Thank you guys in the Wizard of Oz room, I will call it. Always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice. Let your choice control the choose. I'll see you over 107.5 WBLS. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. I love you all. Peace.